ladies and gentlemen, please, let's look alive, because I don't want anyone to die. And this is a very serious situation. And that is one of the reasons I've been talking about it for almost a year, as I've been pointing out that the December 26th total solar eclipse run to the full wolf lunar eclipse on the 10th, 11th to the Pluto-Saturn conjunction would be really weird and really dangerous time for humanity. Or as Kaipacha called it, the dark night of the soul for planet Earth. And I want to shout out to the Leo King for he technically covered the 12th for seven years. So we are made stronger, smarter, and cooler through the help of others. No one is a self-made man or woman. Okay, but if you could tell, this should be a pretty bad situation, man. And I'm in the thick of it, too. I'll be in Houston. But not only do we have a major massive tornado threat, but we have an overall very special straight-lined wind threat where if things go as I think they might, you're going to get a giant wind field that has 73 mile per hour gusts all up and down the United States. As Jack Sillen, who was always chilling and an Asteroid Fight Club all-star, points out, I'm no analog expert, but it's pretty ridiculous how close today's 300 millibar setup is to that of 258, which produced 500 severe weather reports. And uh, 08 was the last time that Saturn went into Capricorn, which we're at now. So it is funny how, you know, if you combined astronomy, astrology, meteorology, mythology, you can come up to some pretty accurate conclusions if that's your cup of tea. Yeah, dude, this thing is serious. Even if we get 400 severe weather reports across the United States of America, Canada, that's going to be quite a bit. And this thing is poised to do some damage. So I want to reiterate again, it's not just the threat of tornadoes, it's the threat of a giant wind wall that will be slowly moving across the country towards the east. And then we'll exit in the northeast with a very dangerous 48 hour window, which should start about anywhere from 8 to 12 hours from now. But Asteroid Fight Club, this is not our first rodeo and hashtag WX Twitter, weather Twitter is a fantastic team when the chips are down. Um, and so James Spann showing us the new extended risk area. And I got to say, I have been watching this storm like a hawk because Cranky Weather Guys confirmed a month ago that we would have a nasty storm around the 10th. And so I've watched the projections on this storm continue to intensify to the worst side. We'd gone through a lucky period where, at, at hurricane season, where the storms weren't as bad as we thought there would be. But now we've flipped the switch back to this storm continues to be projected to be more dangerous and more damaging as we get closer to it. So not only did the National Weather Service put out a wind and tornado warning a week in advance, which is a super rare event in itself. But we have then watched that wind tornado area warning continue to grow and the red bullseye mark in it continued to expand as well. And so we're looking at very high risk for Little Rock, Pine Bluff, Greenville, Monroe, Shreveport, Texarkana, Tyler, Dallas, you're almost in there, Denton, you're close, Sherman. And so it is game on. Astro Fight Club, strap your boots on and get your game face ready.
Now, I spent some uh, some great years in the city of Denton. Started in 2008, weirdly enough. And in the middle of the square, which is great, everyone should go to the square in Denton eventually. They have a giant statue of a tornado. Well, it's not giant, but it's a metal statue. And I'm pretty sure it's for the one that happened. I went and looked it up last night. In 1918. And that is around the last time that a volcano erupted in the United States of America. And it's a date that I've pointed out many times. And it's a date where all the gas giants were on the same side, just like now. And it had a tornado hit. And last, the tornado stayed on the ground for like half of a day. It went on the ground during one day and then was still on the ground the next day. So that... I'm not saying we're going to deal with that type of shit, but I think we're in for a doozy. Cranky weather guy is the best weatherman on the planet, and like me, he gives all of his best information to everyone for free. So I recommend checking out his blog, which I will leave linked for you in my information box. And the best thing to do for up-to-the-minute updates is be on Twitter. Yes, it can be a cesspool filled with political robots, and nihilists most of the time but in weather and earthquake events it is the best place to be and hashtag wx twitter does a fantastic job and cranky during events like this will usually tweet his ass off but no pressure man no pressure being your planetary defense commander is my full-time job and i do a great job at it and part of that is being a scientist and the scientist in me has figured out over the last seven years that when you get all the gas giants on the same side, Neptune, Uranus, Jupiter, Saturn, of the sun, everything gets out of balance, and Earth gets a lot of earthquakes, volcanoes, and really weird weather. So not only do we have the Pluto-Saturn conjunction coming up on the 12th, you have a Saturn-Jupiter conjunction coming up at the end of the year, and I think that is when the earthquake activity is probably going to peak though we shall see so everybody needs to be on full red alert and somehow uh social networking your smartphone and your governments have convinced you that the big giant planets don't make any type of difference whatsoever and it's just carbon but that is not true this is the size of earth this is neptune uranus that is saturn and that is freaking jupiter man so if you have all those buddies on the same side as we all spin around the sun, this is clearly going to cause an imbalance in many things. Earthquake activity has definitely been lit through 2019 and now into 2020. We've just had a 5.5 magnitude earthquake right off the coast of Mexico and it's kind of near listen to the stars in Costa Rica. Oy vey. The volcano, which won the most active award on Earth for 2019, Papacatepel in Mexico, had a major, massive volcano eruption about 10 hours ago. Now, it had some type of activity, whether it be a gas emission, ash, dust, lava, almost every single day in 2019, which I documented. Um, and it, it is always an indicator of how wild and weird the weather is going to get. Now, that, volcanoes and earthquakes are something else the media and scientists don't really like to talk about. But aren't you glad you got me, baby? This is no laughing matter, but I'm prone to make comments about cute women's butts when it gets strange. Taylor Trogdon, the Burninator, NAM 3K, 98 knots at 850 millibars or 110 miles an hour the max is embedded within a much larger area of 80 to 90 knots just above the surface the threat for widespread wind damage and corridors of high end wind damage is concerning to say the least and so this is what i'm saying that like it's even if we don't get a bunch of tornadoes which i think we will um that the wind field is going to be incredible. Um, like it's going to spread across and then drag and go. It's going to be quite an event. So make your peace with God. 
special shout out to our governor, Greg Abbott. He's definitely Asteroid Fight club And to all the police and first responders in Texas. You guys do a great job. Chief Nim Kidd. Hey, Texas, please pay attention to your local officials and local forecast. Greg Abbott has ordered state resources to be immediately ready to support our local partners. Because, you know, this storm ain't no joke. It's We're going to have tornado possibilities, wind possibilities, hail possibilities, flood possibilities. Big problems are headed down the pipe. It's like a whole box of severe weather crayons melted all across the map. You got heavy flooding, snow, blizzard, winter conditions. Pack Northwest, I'm not forgetting about you. They are getting absolutely hammered. Shout out to um, Harley Quinn. May you survive. It's a hallmark of Asteroid Fight Club. We got some fog. Yeah, a little bit of everything. This is basically like a 48-hour event to start at night pretty much tonight and and the worst case is that a lot of the tornado and wind shit will go down during the evening so if you thought a tornado was scary during the day they're extra scary at night or so i've been told this is nowhere near its final form for this storm you're going to have moisture coming in from the pack northwest and then from the gulf and there's a lot of moisture in the gulf to tap from Now, this map has changed quite a bit. This projection doesn't have much of a tornado threat, and it puts it down in central lower Texas. Though, that seems weird. But you can tell this is a very busy, busy storm that we're moving, and then your next one moving in. And not only do you have to watch out for tornadoes, straight line winds, flood, lightning ice sleet snow but also werewolves because you have a total full moon wolf lunar eclipse which can be seen in europe africa and asia so it's just like it's got a little bit of everything spooky and remember 2017, 2018, 2019 were just lead-ups to prepare you for what we would be dealing with this year. It's okay. We're going to get our shit together because individually we are one drop, but together we are an ocean. Wave after wave after wave, baby. People might, people, people might be like, I don't like you, Thor. I'm like, that's weird because I'm the coolest man on the planet. That must mean you're a dickweed. Travis Herzog showing us that Dallas got a 10% chance of getting a tornado. Hey, it's like um, Russian roulette if the gun has 10 chambers. Or in Houston, you have a 5% we have. And that's Austin, Lake Charles, Alexandra, Waco. And so that is like if the gun has 20 chambers. And then Victoria, that is like if the gun had 100 chambers. Wait, is that right? 200 shit. I don't even know. For like the Russian roulette analogy was bad. I just want to take this time out to say again nobody knows what is really happening with the weather. It is best if we put our minds together and adapt accordingly. But yeah, carbon tax is a really bad idea. Really bad. Sprites are cool. Uh, this is brought to us by Domenico Calia. We're looking at our projected rainfall over the next week. And as you can see, a lot of areas are in the red, which is bad. And then some areas are in the orange, which is worse. So get ready for a very wild week, my party people. All right, this is the part of the show where we look at the models. Ladies love this. All right, so we're going to start out at the... It should be today, which is the 10th. Bingo, bango, jingo, jango, and here we go. There we go. And then see how that is a lot of heavy rain. That didn't go as coolly as I wanted to. Okay. Okay, so you have on the 10th, which this is at about 10 p.m. So about 10 p.m. for us tonight is when it'll really start to get going. And then... Look at this. That is a giant chunk of rain. 
rain, sleet, and snow on the back end. And the trend has been for the warmer side, because this is heat versus cold, right? And then the storm is in the middle. And so there's a big battle between the tropical moisture. And remember, Puerto Rico's had a, like a thousand earthquakes in the last week. Uh, it is a volcano chain. I, worst case scenario, I, f I fear volcanic activity coming out of there or a major earthquake. Uh, so please send prayers there and to Australia. Um, <clears throat> and so lately I've been watching the models and the heat side has been beating the cold side. So you got the, all the cold pumping in from here and then all the heat pumping in from here. And the big battle happens. And so if you'll notice, we're getting less snow on the maps and more of the rain. Um, so, but then look at that, dude. That is, a, that is a massive rain that stretches all the way down to like the Gulf of Mexico all the way up into Canada. This is going to be a nasty storm. And look at that. It's, that would be some severe ice. And then it would, the, it should be break on the 12th. So... The worst parts are going to pretty much be through parts of tonight all through Saturday and then parts of Sunday. I mean, it'll still pack a punch as it moves out the East Coast, but the big punch with the giant 100 mile per hour um, wind wall. And then look at the West Coast gets kind of dominated and then more storms continue to arise in the same area. So, July, I mean, January is going to be quite a doozy, man. We're kicking off with one wild ride. Well, I'm your planetary defense commander, and I love you. And I have faith in you. Anytime you want to say, hey, thanks for all your hard work and dedication and for saving Earth several times, you can send me a letter. I love those the most in the mail. My address is here. I got a PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Patron, and I do love being appreciated. Please be cool to everybody on the weather team because we will all be putting in the extra effort. Uh, Greg Diamond noting, programming note, the Weather Channel will be adding an additional 17 hours of live coverage through tomorrow to cover the severe flood, ice, snow threats. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous how bad the storm is going to be. Let's hope that it's not as bad as I think it's going to be, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be bad. Everybody be ready. Everybody be prepared. Okay? As best you can. And say your prayers. Maybe sing a song. Maybe go out of your way to be nicer to people today. Do one extra pay it forward. Like all the help we can get on the energetic defense team. It, we'll take it. So God bless everyone. And definitely the mystical magical uh, shit outside of weather will probably be weird too over the next four days. So be prepared for that because the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is a big deal. And the last time Pluto conjunct Saturn was in 1982. And Khrushchev, the head of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, died of a heart attack. And he was the head of the Soviet Union. And then the Soviet Union fell apart soon after. So it's a big deal, man. <clears throat> it's a big deal. Um, Pluto is kind of like a you know, Hades, the underworld. So it's the underworld and death. So hopefully we can get the underworld people to be cooler too. Hopefully we can all get cooler. We can, we all have massive room for improvement. Anyway, I'm me, you're you. Let's get better at being us. I love you. God bless everyone. Stay cool. Talk to y'all soon.